Hey there, you want to learn some R? Alright, so two videos in a row, let's go. So when it comes to <laughs> so when it comes to this, what we're gonna do is um erase what we did in the last class, last video, and just press Control L or Command L, boom. I'm also going to just erase the history with the boom, boom. And let's say, for example, your console is on your on the right. You can just move it to your console's on the left, that's you, which is on the bottom of this. Can you even see it? Like this, yeah, you see it right there, boom. You can also then move it to the right, like that. So I'm gonna move it back to the left because that's where I like it. So then that's that. All right. So and I'm also since I'm here and I see the environment, I'm gonna also erase this. Boom. And then I'm gonna do this. this is probably the last time I'm gonna do this for you all, but um, in that I'm gonna click here. <laughs> I'll do a new tab, right? And um, press download. Boom. Go to um this where you see chapter one of my downloads and i'm not going to go to data i'm going to go one folder back up to this and i could have another directory called chapter chapters let's do that okay so i'm going to remove this put this here chapter chapter one and the fact that i used here here that code is that code is not going to be um perturbed if I didn't do that, if I if I had to move one file and move I just move one file, I had to move both. Long story short. <laughs> um, all right. So with that being the case, I'm gonna stay true to my word. Create a new directory called Chapters because I like that. Um, and then I'm just gonna move Chapter Zero and Chapter One into this gear sign. Move it into Chapter. Chapters. Whoop, whoop. All right, good. So now if I click on chapters, click on chapter one. There we go. All right. So today we're going to learn about something called learn something about dplyr. Dplyr allows us to do data. I would say data transformations. Some people say data manipulations. For me, it's more political. <laughs> um, data transformations. So I already installed it. So you have to install it using this line of code. Boom. And let's actually make this look fancy. So press visual. Close this. Wow. A lot of things to talk about. So install dplyr. You also need to install remotes. So in this class, you would have, during the quarter, the next time I teach it again, I'm going to talk about GitHub. Um, but I created a package. Okay, I think is this the time for me to talk about the difference? Soon I'll be talking about the difference between a package and a library. You can Google it or chat GBT it early if you want to, if you're pressed for more knowledge. But um I will give a definition of it pretty soon. But here you're gonna install remotes um and then run library remotes to then be able to install my package that I created for a hackathon data science hackathon um through my business talk about that later um the idea here is that um, i have data here i have data that's nice to use that i think that you all find kind of cool so this is that's the reason why we're doing this okay okay i'm gonna leave that there all right so you can uncomment it by highlighting it and press Control shift c or command shift c okay that's good so dplyr again allows us to do data transformations okay so there are a lot of data transformations we're going to only highlight five in this video i think five or six <sighs> all right five or six maybe seven and then um in other videos subsequent videos after next chapter next following weeks we will see um dplyr being used again because it's that powerful so here what we're going to do is look at this code this looks complicated but by the end of this video it's going to make sense i'm excited <laughs> all right so there's this function called all artists and it shouldn't run okay um and let's check out the errors what it gives us but we're going to be able to explain what's going on here after um this video so run this the first error is a range okay so starting from the bottom what we're going to then do is just because we i didn't do this yet but use dplyr so when i run dplyr i'm still going to get an error 
Oop. It says all artists not found. And how I do that, because that's where my data set is. That's my data set, my data frame. Gato 365 Data Science Academy. And then boom. Ooh, still in there. Artist not found. Okay, we're going to fix that later, but it will work soon. It will work. Don't worry. Um, all right, so dplyr verbs. There are technically six dplyr verbs, but we look at them as if there are five for us to do basic manipulations to our data set. So whether it's changing rows, changing rows, changing columns, um, we're able to work with um, these verbs in such a way. Um, so here's the first one. It's called select. Okay, select. So select allows us to select the columns. Okay, select columns. And so and so we're going to utilize this pipe symbol. But before we utilize this pipe symbol, let me change this code up a tad bit and make it run. Um, this is going to give us an error because it says artists not found. And I'm happy I have that error. Okay, I'll talk about that in a second. Okay, so I'm going to do this. So traditionally speaking, this would work where the first argument, okay, arguments are what you put into functions. I mentioned that in the previous video. Argument, the first argument is going to be the data frame, and then the second argument, the second, the second and forward arguments are going to be the columns that you're after. Okay, so this would work, okay, but I definitely, um, it says artist not found. So let's see what it's called. So it's capital V I E W. Okay, artist, what is it called? All artist data frame. Okay, so when I do that, it allows me to see the data frame. It says artist name. It's called artist name. That's why it didn't work. Okay, good. Artist name. I think that this is still not going to work because I don't think this sales. Interesting. I doubt it says sales. Okay. So let's erase sales. I'll run it. Give me the error. Sales doesn't exist. Album doesn't exist either. Jeez. <laughs> Yikes. Um, let's just do um, artist name for now. Okay, now it should work. Okay, so I say select the data. I go to my environment. I should see select the data, which is just the artist names. And this is a real data, by the way. I got this from Spotify. I have a lot of, we'll talk about that in class. Okay. <laughs> so Taylor Swift, yay. All right, so that's select. Um, but the thing is, we can do something different with it. So this is where I'm going to explain the pipe. So pipe allows us to just rearrange our code to be more readable. So it's percent greater than percent. We call that pipe for our code to be more readable. Other modern programmers or some modern programmers use this same syntax. Syntax is just a way of us typing out code. Um, I am stuck in my ways. <laughs> this will work as well. Um, just like control shift M will work as well. Okay. All right. So what I can also get is again access to track number valence so i can just if i press tab i can look at all the variables i have access to i can say instrumentalness instrumentalness like speechiness okay and now that when i run this i gain access to those columns okay all those variables great fantastic another benefit is that say for example you want to do two selects in a row which is not common but you'll see what, what i mean as the course goes on i can, I can pipe function on top of function so let's say now i just want to have artist name okay and now i'm just going to get artist name and select okay hopefully all that that makes sense all right, so I'll let you all read why what this concept is. You can read that on again, and then why it's important. Because time is going. So example of data. So now this um, filter allows us to reduce based off of the rows. So column is the select is the columns, whereas filter allows us to select certain or choose certain rows. So in this particular syntax, this should not work. Why shouldn't it work? Because it's not called artist. It's called artist name. So let's just look at the error so we can get more experience looking at errors. Okay, artist not found. Okay, so if I do artist name, okay, this should not work. Okay, so filter data. So you may ask yourself, 
when we understand filter, so filter allows us to go um, to select certain rows. And essentially what it's selecting right now is selecting um, Kendrick Lamar and Taylor Swift. Okay. And so what does N do? N is an operator that allows us to check for multiple um, text or levels. I want, I'm going to say levels for now because text works, but levels will make more sense as we progress in this class. So we can uh, go through and select multiple levels of a particular variable. So I could have done, well, one way to do this is just to look at just one um, artist. Okay. And I could have just already, I'm just going to comment this out. I'm just going to go and then do filter again. I can say artist, if I spell it correctly artist name is equal equal so this double equal allows me to only look for one artist at a time okay or one of the levels Taylor Swift and watch when I run this if I spelled it right it's not going to be 672 anymore it's going to decrease because it's not Kendrick Lamar okay but then okay so that allows me to look for one artist at a time but when I do and if I have multiple artists I'm going to actually use um the n um operator did i say or here i did do or okay good so and the last operator that we can talk about is the or operator and how we would set that up i'm gonna comment this out is to remember i'm gonna comment this out yikes when i run this i should get 672 so just remember that number but now I'm going to do Taylor Swift or um, artist name. I did too much. Remove that or. Kendrick Lamar. I think I said 672. And so I'm going to comment out this. You know, this may not work. I'm pretty sure this is not going to work. I know. <laughs> it's okay. Um, comment this out. And then I should get an error. Oh, it did work. Okay. So this is another word. Sorry. I got ahead of myself. There's another way for me to do it. So this is the or. And it allows me to look at or. This is either true or this is true. Okay. All right, we may run over time, but um, so you can see how you can use or equal equal or n to essentially um, choose certain rows. All right, so with that being said, the next thing to talk about is arrange. Okay, arrange allows us to just arrange the data frame based off of a particular variable, whether it's an order A B C or date or um, num numerical values. Okay, so. If I do track, if I wanted to order this by track number, let's see, hopefully it's treated as a number, track number, okay. And I don't know if you understood what I said by that, okay. So if I go here, I shall have all ones first. What I said earlier is that hopefully it's treated as a number. So in the back of your mind, you could have been like, what does he mean by that? So what I mean by that is that there is a function in R that allows you to, a couple functions that allow you to see what's going on with your data and how it's being treated. And so what I could do is do str, I mean structure of all artist data frame. And that gives us a general, so you can see it says logic, integer, so on and so forth. So for track numbers, it should be as if it's an integer. Whereas key mode, this is a good time to talk about this, it's treated as a character. So it's a not synonym for text and more specifically with NR is considered to be a character. Okay. So that's a range. Okay. So that's number four. And then that's not four. <laughs> that's the third verb. Okay. So we did select, filter, arrange. Now it's going to be mutate. I'm pretty sure. Let's see. You can see what um what it does, and then um in descending you can do the opposite order, um and then why it's important. And then mutate finally or the fourth verb. I'm gonna keep going. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do another video. Okay, I'm gonna keep on going. All right. So here mutate allows us to create 
a column, create a new variable. Okay, so create a new variable. Sales does not exist. Okay, this should give us an error. Sales does not exist. Okay, sales not found. And so what I can do, for example, for us to like, practice mutating some of these variables, okay, are, let's say we have energy. I already know this energy is in between zero and one, but if I want it to be in between zero and 10, I just multiply by 10. 10 times 0 0.9. Yeah, that works. <laughs> I have to think about it. So energy, okay, by 10, and I'll just take energy, and then multiply by 10. Okay, so when I do mutate data, close this out, I have this new variable, energy by 10. And so let, now this is where the, the pipe is really useful. Now I can just select um, energy. And I think this is a good practice for everyone learning, anyone learning this. Just double check that your whatever variables that you're manipulating, selecting, or filtering, that you just confirm that you're actually getting those results, right? And so that works. That works. Okay, so mutate allows you to create new variables. All right. All right. So last but not least, I will say this is this is pretty important. Group by. Okay, so this allows you to group by a particular level. That new terminology that I use. Group by a particular level. Let's say by artist name, <laughs> and find the average or find the total. Find some statistic regarding that a said variable. So you can group by artist name. Okay, group by, and this is why I say it's six, because you need a group by and a summarize. Artist name, and then I'm gonna say average what? Let's say average uh, energy level, energy. I don't know, I have to squeak my voice, that's strange. Energy, let's do average. And average here, I believe it's, wow, I'm forgetting the mean. Is it really mean? Oh, wow. It is the mean. <laughs> so energy. And I'm going to do something quite strange. I don't have to because I already know it's going to run. But I'm going to put comma na dot rm is equal to true. I could have just done t for true. So this means that if there is any na's, ignore them. Okay. If you don't do that and na's are there, it's going to treat it as if. It's not going to be able to calculate it. It's going to give you an na. So this is, this is in case you ever see that. But it's not going to be that way because I already know that all this data doesn't have any missing values. So summary data is now there. So it tells you we have 17 artists. Who's your favorite artist? <laughs> so here we have all these different artists here and there's, here's the average energy. And I can go here within R and click this top button to see the min and max, min. Oh, and yeah, Meek Mill makes sense. Then Dua Lipa, I don't know. I don't know her songs like that, but I know Meek Mill songs are pretty energetic. <laughs> all right, is that it? So I'm gonna do a Quick, so there are functions that I didn't get to discuss because there's so many different functions within um, dplyr. We are going to talk about left join, um, and you can read up on these. Um, but quick review, I know, I know, I know. Um, we talked about select. We talked about um, filter. We talked about arrange. We talked about mutate. We talked about group by and summarize. So those are the five verbs within dplyr. Um, now, if you were to go back to the beginning of the code, okay, this should make sense, right? You're selecting, you're filtering based on these two artists. You're selecting these particular variables that don't exist. So then these two don't exist, but you can, okay, that's fine. And then you're arranging by year, which currently doesn't exist, but still, you, you get the you get the general gist. Twenty minute video, twenty minute video. All right. Thank you all for watching and have a good day. Bye.